Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Gayustis Joe Starr. I am a retired school teacher and just completed a Bachelor of Arts degree at VIU in Indigenous Studies and Canadian History. Um, I'm going to be reading a, a story wrote from the New England Weaver called The Three. Uh, this story originally started off as a novel concept. This is a story of those young girls who were chosen by the spirits to sing the Kwayayu, or the morning songs for the people when there's a death in the community. In this story, this is what I imagined what life was like back in the time. Okay, the three. The three old women slowly walked along the village road like they owned the path. It was always this way. They never questioned why. What was there to question? All three of them knew that they were chosen to walk on a different path. No one had convinced them of what they felt life had dealt the three of them. As they walked along the path to get to the other end of the village, people felt something radiating off them as they casually walked. After the first few years, the three didn't even notice the stairs that were sometimes flung their way. Why did people think that these three were supposed to meekly look down at the ground as if the ground was about to share an important message? It was at a feast that these old women first met, or so it seemed. They were aware of one another's existence. They first met as children. Uh, they did not know what it was, nor could they explain to anyone what was happening. The three did not sit together at the same table. Back then, rarely were children permitted to witness what was said and to see what goes on in the feasting house. The spirits soon began to softly sing the songs. That was their special gift. The girls were able to grab the songs out of the still air. As the three spirits danced through the feasting house, they sang their songs and left the songs behind for the three. The spirits had come to visit the feasting house. The spirits were visiting from Ulstam. The spirits spoke to one another as they have never allowed themselves to wander from the rock until now. The rock was a very special site. It was not just any rock. It was an island. The island was very barren in that there were no trees. The island was chosen because of where it was situated. When someone sang one of the sacred songs on a rock, their voice carried with very little effort. Or so, that is what the old spirits were told. The island had always been protected as it was also the birthing waters for the blackfish. Oh, if the spirits could tell what they have seen and heard over time. Even though the spirits were singing softly, their voices resonated through the feasting house and bounced off the thick slabs of red cedar. That was the wall. It was only the three girls that were able to hear the sacred songs being released by the spirits. The spirits knew of the feasting house, the three chosen ones were present, but they were not accustomed to dealing with the human form. The spirits were at the feasting house to see who these three chosen ones were. To their surprise, or was it delight, the three chosen were young girls. The three were chosen by the spirits to be the mourners or wailers for the community. Back then, grieving was an arduous event. The spirits were very careful as they danced above the, the heads of the three. The spirits were unsure if they should transform into human form and take these three with them and show them the way into the spirit world? Or do they just uh, instill the sacred songs that were only sung when there was someone who passed on to the other world? There was less risk involved in avoiding the human form. The spirits danced around the three as they sang their songs in the language of the spirits. How were the spirits able to penetrate the three young minds without them knowing 
what was occurring and that all three were singing the same song. It was a song they'd never heard before. It was only the three voices that were heard in the feasting house. It wasn't Reisla, it wasn't Shemeshen, and it wasn't Gitzen. It wasn't until the following year that the Chinook language came to be. It was a gift to the coastal people from the spirits. As the three grew, so did their role and what was expected of them. In a very short time, the three had mastered the new language, but no new people to attach ownership to the language. It was a very strange event on the coast those first few years, but the three had done well. One day, a being came into the community, just as night had descended. The community could not place who this person was. She did not resemble any of the local people. To this day, no one knows. She did not resemble the people from the community, nor from neighbors of the north. The people were busy talking and oblivious to the unknown being meandering through the people. The old woman's face had very deep wrinkles that held ancient songs and teachings. She was the keeper of the song culture and keeping it alive until the next chosen one was found. Uh, the old woman walked very slowly as her body stopped to rest. Rest on her cane that had a long, that had a frog head carved on the handle. The cane was her support, just as much as her, as her clan was, who were the frogs. The old woman did not need to see who these three were as she went, as she was sent out to reach and touch with her eyes and her cane. It was through her cane that she imparted the old Asian songs. The old woman was puzzled as to why there were now three. What happened to one? To the old woman, everything around her was changing too quickly for her to keep, keep up and she felt like her world was slowing down. As the old woman shuffled her way through the community, she felt Silter frail Brody being drawn to some power towards the tree. Okay, the three. At the same time, the three looked blankly on the spot and the three sets of eyes locked onto one set of eyes. It was at this point that the three saw that the old woman who was moving forward toward them was one of the old spirits that had taken on the human form. The old woman was imprisoned in the human form until she was able to impart all of what she had held in her wrinkles of her face to the newly chosen. She did not know how long the search had been going on, but in a spirit world, what does time mean? The old woman was told when she was in spirit form that she will connect with the new singers by locking her eyes with theirs. Her frog cane beat on the ground as she transferred all, all she knew to the tree, to the three. The three had no idea what was happening, but then the humans do not understand the, the spirit form. There were a few events that were new to the three. So this is what the old woman did. Her body was talking to her, telling her, that it was time to rest. After the old woman completed what she was sent to do, she slowly began to transform back into spirit form. Even the frog's head was now in spirit. Intrinsically, the three knew exactly what was happening. Since they understood, there was no need to reason. The three felt what had happened, felt what had happened, but there was no emotion attached. This was one of their first life lessons as a mourner. As the three grew older, the three were sent out to the rock by one of the elder spirits. The three did not know that even though they were in human form, they only communicated in the new language. Then one morning, the drummers communicated to one another that it was time to return to Ulstam. They communicated only with a new language. 
This was to be the first time that women were permitted on this island. That next morning, the drummers and the three paddled towards Alstom. There is something very special about going to that rock. The three had a feeling of familiarity that enveloped their bodies as they slowly paddled their way to the rock. The three saw what looked like a white crack in the rock, which ran from the top to the watermark at low tide. What an odd sight to see from where we were, where they were. The three wondered why they were never allowed to paddle to this rock. Yet they felt drawn to the rock. As the years pass, the three were always called along with the men every spring and fall as they journeyed to Ulstam. It has always been known that it was the men that did this. But the past few years, things on the island are now different. Women had never accompanied the men as they left the community for extended periods of time. So that, they could, so that they could fast. The people believed that fasting allowed the humans to only travel the route of the spirits without reaching a destination as how most human journeys end. The three were indifferent to the energy that was changing as they neared the rock. As the canoe was being unloaded, a spiritual presence was felt by the three. The three had remembered hearing stories from the spirits that would visit them each time to reconnect to the past. The three, when they were younger, did not understand why people were afraid of the spirits as they often came, or came around to visit after a death in the community. Why is it that spirits seem to get restless when there is a death? What were the spirits in search of? The three wrapped their spruce root capes around themselves being sure that their heads were covered. The rover spruce root hats uh, were tilted down so that their eyes could not be seen. They sat patiently, waiting for the drummers to unpack and go through the peculiar motions that seemed to surface only when they gathered on the island. The drum was held in one hand, and on the other hand, the drummer held a bone drumstick. Each of the drummers had his own bone stick. These sticks, they were told, were a gift from the spirits that called Alstom home. Uh, the, the drummers twirled the bone stick before starting the session. The old story told that the spirits came to choose a drummer for the new purpose, or is it an assigned role for life? No one questioned anything. The people did, did what had to be done. That's just the way it is. The three sat motionless as the drummers oh, made the bones dance before connecting with a drum skin. The old story told that the bone stick was a gift from the rock. The three were mesmerized by these sticks. From the top of the rock, right down to the low water mark, was a fault line. As the chosen few that printed on the island, they always nodded towards this fault. They all knew that the rock was a burial site, but of a different sort. It is said only the song makers and drummers were buried on the rock. Their bodies were put in a fetal position and placed inside bentwood boxes. The lid was placed on top and secured down with red cedar rope. The box was placed at a certain spot with a mysterious fault. It was only the drummers who knew where. When the singing began, it was just the three who did the singing. As they began to sing, their voices soon began to quiver. Just like that, they were wailing as these unknown songs danced their way out of their mouths. The drummers touched the drum skin softly as the three wailed. Song after song was released from within. The trips to Alstom over time began to take its toll on the three. This is what they had to do. They were not receiving any visits from the spirits. Until they do, they continue to do what they were doing. Will there be someone chosen to carry on the ancient songs of the song makers? As the three walked to the other end of the village, they knew that there was going 
going to be the last trip with the drummers. The group has now aged and there were no replacements to be found. The three knew this because on their last trip, the spirits did not visit them while at Alstom. And Alstom is an actual place in the Kildala Arm and it was a burial site for song makers and drummers who apparently were only men from what I remember hearing from late Rod Bolton and uh, Fred Woods. Uh, like I said, this uh, story or this concept story was going to be a novel. But the novel I'm finishing off now on the fictional account of the influenza epidemic of 1919. The three here are the main characters that are in my novel. Uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Um, I, I, I just have a comment on how I really like that you had made the characters three girls who were, who had that permission to go to that place. Yeah. Because um, now they, uh, I remember people saying, even as a child, when you got your your childhood name, that didn't give you the right to go into a feasting hall. I just found that was quite interesting. So what, um, what were the rules around having, um, of being a song maker or drummer? Uh, just that they were, they were, uh, they would just go and compose songs. I'm assuming they were Kwayayus, the morning songs. I remember doing a, a high school project with Diane Folsom. I think I was in grade nine then. But there were, from what I say together, there were 12 song makers. Wow. Does anyone have any questions? You feel free to unmute your, the sound on your, your end if you have any questions or comments. Yeah, Uncle Joe. Yeah, yeah. Angwas. <laughs> Angwa. 